Bonjour tout le monde. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'd like to acknowledge that uh, we're meeting at Queen's Park on the Treaty 13 lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and to just reaffirm the Ontario Green Party's commitment to the truth and reconciliation process. I think we can all agree that we are in a cost of living crisis. The rates of inflation are going up and it's getting increasingly more expensive for Ontarians to keep a roof over their head, to put food on the table, to keep the lights on, and to get around. But Doug Ford thinks the answer to affordability challenges that people are facing are election gimmicks like license plate stickers, which I point out, unfortunately, the NDP and Liberals supported, or short-term fixes like the gas tax bill, which will, in fact, according to the government itself, only save the average Ontario family $65. And let's get real, and let's be honest with people. These election gimmicks will almost do nothing to address the real affordability challenges that people are facing, and they will have the added negative impact of ramping up climate pollution. The government's pro-sprawl, anti-climate agenda is actually making life more expensive for people, forcing people into long, expensive, soul-crushing commutes, paving over the farmland that grows the local food that we all depend on, which will only make us more dependent on international supply chains, in, which will then only lead to higher costs at the grocery store. The Premier is rolling out the red carpet for big oil and wealthy land speculators, slashing renewable energy contracts and ramping up higher cost forms of electric generation, such as gas-fired power plants. The Ontario Greens have real, new, and sustainable solutions to the affordability challenges that people in this province are facing. And the Ontario Greens Affordability Action Plan will immediately address the housing affordability crisis, which is at a breaking point, by expanding zoning options to include fourplexes and triplexes as of right to help us increase housing supply and create more affordable choices for families, and by implementing vacancy and RIC controls on all rental units to prevent unsustainable and unaffordable price increases for renters. We will make it more affordable for people to get around by getting big oil out of our wallets and getting relief from the gas pumps by immediately cutting transit fares in half uh, to make transit more affordable and to assist municipalities in making it more reliable. And by making it aff more affordable to drive and bike electric, by offering rebates of $10,000 for the purchase of a new electric vehicle and $1,000 for the purchase of a used electric vehicle and or an electric bike. We will help people save money by lowering their energy bills, by launching a transformative green retrofit program and offering real incentives to make heat pumps affordable and available for folks so we can help people save money by saving energy. And we will address skyrocketing food prices and grocery bills by permanently protecting the prime farmland that grows our food, by freezing urban boundaries and supporting local food farmers and community gardens, and bringing forward a grocery code of conduct to help not only protect consumers, but also the people who grow our food. These are real solutions that will actually make life more affordable now and in the future. Permanently, permanent, affordable solutions. The answer is not cutting taxes to promote the use of fossil fuels, especially at a time when we're in a climate emergency and the UN 
has clearly stated that it's now or never for climate action. Now is not the time to cut license fees, an election gimmick that caters largely to wealthier people in the province and does nothing to address the long-term affordability concerns that people have and removes $1.1 billion from the Ontario Treasury, money needed to deliver things like affordable mental health care services for the people of this province. So I call on the Premier and I call on my opposition party colleagues to get serious about the cost of living crisis and to work with the Ontario Greens to implement solutions that address the systemic affordability challenges facing Ontarians. We have to act now. We cannot afford to wait. Let's get to work. Thank you, and I'm available to answer any questions. Do you have any thoughts on the Ring of Fire announcement um, during this morning? Yeah, you know, the Ontario Greens have been longtime supporters of a critical mineral strategy and a mining to manufacturing supply chain for electric vehicles and importantly, uh, a battery technology, which not only is important for electric vehicles, but also battery storage for renewable energy. And we've always said that for that strategy to work, we need to ensure that we have free informed prior consent from indigenous communities and that we have partnership with indigenous peoples. And so seeing movement in, in that direction, we see as a green win and we call on the premier to backtrack on his previous rhetoric about getting on a bulldozer and going up to the ring of fire and to actually do the kind of hard work of ensuring full indigenous partnership and consent uh, in the development of the ring of fire. Do you see any potential to like work with um, liberals or NDP on any of your uh, affordability kind of flanks and are you saying they may not be kind of um, what you want at this point in time, but yeah, in terms of realistic possibilities at the election. Uh, well, I mean, right now I'm trying to work with any party in this legislature prior to the election and prior to the announcement of, of the budget uh, before the end of this month to try to get as many of these affordability solutions uh, available to Ontarians as fast as possible, especially I think our, our plan to cut transit fares in half. Um, you know, it, the premier only seems to think that uh, supporting vehicle drivers is the way to address affordability concerns. He's completely left out uh, people who don't own a car, people who rely on transit. He's completely left out people who are struggling to find an affordable place to call home. And so I'm hoping for some immediate action on the solutions we're putting forward. And I'm also absolutely open to working with any party, including the other two opposition parties, pre and post election on delivering systemic affordability solutions to people, not these election gimmicks and band-aids that are really just covering over the cracks in the system. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, if you have any questions, please press star one. The first question comes from Adam Donaldson with Guelph Political. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Good morning, Mike. Can I Am I heard all right? Am I being heard? Yeah, I can hear you fine, Adam. Excellent. So, Mike, from my own uh, individualistic political analysis up to the second here, it seems like maybe you are in a battle um, with you know, people are looking for uh, more affordable solutions. The the premier is sending them out checks. Uh, if the gas tax is cut, that will be something they can see almost immediately at the pumps. Uh, some of the solutions you're talking about could take months slash years to come into effect. Is is that a political problem? No, Adam, I would say uh, our plan to cut transit fares in half is a solution that could be delivered immediately making better use of existing transportation infrastructure. We already know that municipal budgets are under significant pressure due to uh, underutilization of transit. And so let's make it more affordable for people to be able to ride transit. And let's take some pressure off those municipal budgets so they can deliver more reliable transit for people. Um, the calls that are coming into my office, particularly around the license plate gimmick, 
is actually people furious because they recognize that all three of the other parties in this legislature voted for that. I'm the only MPP in the entire legislature to vote against this license plate gimmick. And what people are telling me is, is they would rather have immediate access to expand in mental health services with the $1.1 billion that the Ford government, with the support of the liberals and the NDP, frankly, have taken out of our system, that is money that could deliver help for people right now. Children's Mental Health Ontario is calling for a $350 million investment to immediately, immediately reduce wait times to under 30 days for youth mental health services. Right now, the average wait time is 18 months, and sometimes it's as long as two and a half years. Our kids cannot afford to wait. Everything is not okay, uh, especially given the pandemic that we've been through and we're still going through. And so having those, those financial resources and having the province have the fiscal capacity to deliver those solutions in this budget to immediately increase and expand services for people, I think are, are absolutely needed and necessary and people recognize the implications of these gimmicks and how it's negatively going to affect their lives short term and long term. I mean, some of the issues around housing affordability, yes, are more long term. But the problem is, is that's a long term crisis that really started growing in the mid 1990s and successive governments have failed to address it. Now we're at a breaking point. We have to start addressing it right now because people can't afford to wait five years, 10 years for solutions to the, to the housing affordability crisis. So our plan is offering immediate short-term, medium-term, and long-term systemic changes to address the real affordability challenges people are facing. So to um, follow up with another political question, uh, the, the angry calls you're getting at your office, notwithstanding that the PCs are showing pretty significant strength in, in the latest opinion polls, uh, enough strength that they could easily get another majority government. Um, I guess, are you concerned that the anger you're hearing about it is n not going to be translated into political action when the time comes? Well, uh, you know, I think uh, the response to that really has to come from political leaders like myself to offer Ontarians a clear alternative and a more fiscally responsible and practical approach to addressing the real affordability challenges people are facing. And I know polls are a snapshot of what people thought yesterday. Uh, June 2nd will be the poll that ultimately decides what the composition of the legislature is. And, you know, I, I'm excited uh, to go out and talk to people about the real solutions to old problems that the Ontario Greens are putting forward and to give people a real alternative uh, to, you know, these election gimmicks and and these schemes that the premier is putting forward that's really not going to address the foundational reasons that we're facing these affordability challenges. Follow up? Oh, no, thank you. I'm good. Great. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate you joining us this morning.